It was an ordinary prehistoric day 66 million years ago. Megafauna was having Megaflor for brunch. Nobody had the faintest idea that a catastrophe was going to strike in... Three, two, one... A space object whose diameter equaled half of Manhattan hit Earth. According to scientists, this event could have triggered a mass extinction. As a result of climate change, around 75% of all flora and fauna died. Almost all dinosaurs were gone, except for the first pioneers of the sky. But why would scientists think that the culprit of the tragedy was from outer space? Who was the suspect here on Earth? What were the investigative leads? How was the evidence gathered? And was there an asteroid in the first place? What could lower the boom on these animals if they were the size of trucks? Over the past 200 years, there have been a lot of theories, from scientific to ridiculous. Many of you heard that before the asteroid event, the living standard of dinosaurs was already declining, and some species were close to extinction. Guys, don't confuse the Cretaceous period with the Middle Ages. I'm telling you, it's a bunch of lies. In fact, the dinosaur society was thriving, asked Joseph Bonsor. This PhD student at the Natural History Museum published an article in the Royal Society Open Science Journal. And it fully proves what I said. Joseph performed a computational analysis which showed that if it hadn't been for the impact of that ill-fated asteroid, we would have continued to live after the Cretaceous period. Physicist Wallace Tucker and paleontologist Dale Russell got the most solid lead on the killer. They said they knew who'd been behind the extinction and accused the nearest supernova. As a result of its explosion, X-rays attacked the upper atmosphere and triggered a cold wave. Researchers, however, didn't find any traces of such an explosion up in space. But instead, they found a crater that turned out to be a graveyard of all the previous theories. How could one single finding change the entire course of the investigation? How could they determine the crime scene and what was found there? Geophysicist Glenn Penfield worked for a Mexican oil company called Pemex. In 1978, he was examining a magnetic survey map of the Gulf of Mexico and noticed a semicircular arc, a part of the Chicxulub impact crater. The crater reached 150 kilometers in diameter and was 20 kilometers deep. And that's almost two times deeper than the Mariana Trench. Penfield presented his findings at the Society of Exploration Geophysicists Conference, but his report attracted scant attention and was swept under the rug. Several years later, the father and son team of Louis and Walter Alvarez, a physicist and geologist, made an important discovery. In different parts of the planet, they found an abnormally high iridium-enriched layer of clay that was 66 million years old. Iridium is a rare element on Earth, but it's frequently present in space rock samples. What's more, bits of shocked quartz and tektites found in that layer also pointed towards an interstellar visitor. These bits emerged due to extreme pressure produced by a nuclear explosion or a meteor strike. Based on this evidence, the team concluded that the mass extinction was caused by a fall of a celestial body. In another 10 years, Glenn Penfield and paleontologist Alan Hildebrand examined the drill samples from the Chicxulub crater. All indications were that the giant space object had fallen in that exact location. So the researchers found the crime scene and soon even identified two suspects. Who were they? A comet or an asteroid? Let's thoroughly study the habits and abilities that each of them has. Researchers at Dartmouth College, New Hampshire, attempted to find the culprit. 
They suggested that the amount of iridium in the examined layer of clay was highly overestimated, and that when the explosion had occurred, much fewer fragments had gone up into the atmosphere. When scholars recalculated the amount of iridium, they claimed that it could have been brought to Earth by an asteroid 5 kilometers in diameter, and it could have originated in an asteroid belt located between Mars and Jupiter. That place, by the way, is still chock full of space boulders prone to change their trajectory at any moment. But how can we explain the size of the crater? The New Hampshire team gave their own answer – a 7-kilometer comet. Obviously, this comet came from the Oort cloud. The vast distance it had to cover on its way to Earth let it reach the speed required for a massive explosion. Avi Love and Amir Siraj, astrophysicists from Harvard, supported the charge. They carried out a geochemical analysis of the crater's rocky outcrops and stated that 100% of comets and only 10% of asteroids that cross our orbit have the chemistry matching the one found in the Chicxulub impact crater. However, most researchers absolutely hated these theories, and not only because of gross errors that both teams made in their studies. What were the facts proving all of that had been an asteroid's fault? Let's take a look. Fact number one. According to up-to-date assessments, the fallen object brought around 250 tons of iridium. A comet 7 kilometers in diameter would have brought no more than 200 tons, as comets are composed of lighter elements and ice. Meanwhile, a 10-kilometer asteroid could be capable of handling the task. Fact number two. The last time when a massive object fell on Earth was 250 million years ago. Comets of this kind hit Earth approximately once every 4 billion years, and the chance it ended up in the Chicxulub is less than 7%. At the same time, 10-kilometer asteroids fall every 350 million years. This gives us more than a 50% chance. Fact number three. The structure of the impact crater consists of carbonaceous chondrites. It's a type of rock that contains water and organic compounds typically found in asteroids and comets. However, that chondrite subtype is common only for asteroids. As you see, scientists have investigated this case really well, so there isn't a shadow of a doubt that the fault lies with the asteroid. 66 million years ago, two days before the impact, we spotted a small luminary in the sky. It kept getting brighter. We didn't think there was anything wrong with it, so we continued our daily routine. Herbivorous dinosaurs were chewing the lush greenery, pterosaurs were soaring through the air, and mosasaurs were lapping in the sea. But a couple of days later, we looked up and saw that there were already two suns. One of them was heading straight for Earth. That fireball, with a temperature of 20,000 degrees Celsius and a speed greater than 72,000 kilometers, passed through the Earth's atmosphere and crashed into it in the region of what is modern-day Mexico. At that moment, a large-scale explosion occurred and a supersonic shockwave swept across the planet. It was a billion times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. You're gonna say it's impossible to get out of something like that, but it's possible. One thing, trust me. If you find yourself at the epicenter of the explosion, rest in peace. If you don't burn alive, you'll get instantaneous third-degree burns all over your body from thermal radiation. But those fortunate enough to be away from the asteroid impact have a chance of surviving. First, stock up on earplugs, otherwise a deafening sonic boom will cause your eardrums to burst, as happened with ancient dinosaurs. The debris from the crater created by the asteroid will fly toward orbit around the Sun. Some of them can even reach Mars. Keep in mind that the debris that flew not so high will begin to fall back to Earth later on. So try digging a hole to hide in a shelter, or better yet, cover yourself with some rock. If your paws are too little for that, don't panic. 
just get down. Can you hear that, T-Rexes? You don't have to run anywhere. At the moment of impact, the Earth's surface will move periodically. Due to your outstanding height, you're just going to hit the ground and smash your skull. If you're a flying dinosaur, for example, Quetzalcoatlus, it's the wrong time to show off your aerial maneuvers. Come down to Earth and move on your feet. Otherwise, you'll get hit by glass bullets. These are formed from molten rocks released into the atmosphere. Falling back to Earth, they cool off and form vitreous substances. Then the flood will begin. In our era, it was a phenomenal tsunami about 305 meters high. It's approximately twice as high as the Spring Temple Buddha. Even if you can swim, you won't escape an impact of a wave like that. But earthquakes, fires and tsunamis won't be the end. Then came the worst part. If you're still conscious the day after the asteroid hit the planet, use your chance. But you need to know the soot and dust generated by the catastrophe will block the sunlight that reaches Earth, and all plants will start to die. So, if you're a herbivore like me, don't rush to devour everything at once. It'd be better to reasonably distribute the remaining vegetation and make stocks. The sudden death of most creatures had a devastating effect on the food chain of marine and land animals. But if you want to make extra sure you'll survive in a post-apocalyptic world, just grow wings. Dinosaurs related to birds manage to adapt. Their ability to fly helped them escape the most unfavorable places and quickly move to the least affected parts of the planet. Due to their small size, the birds didn't require much food. In addition, there were enough insects, which are also very resilient creatures. Then the birds gradually switched to seeds and nuts, and in the process of evolution, their teeth started to disappear. Eventually, these survivors became became the millions of birds that exist today. They're all descendants of ancient dinosaurs who heroically survived extinction. And it breaks my heart to see people call birds flying rats and teach them bad words. <laughs> of course, according to forecast, a new 10-kilometer asteroid won't disturb us for the next 284 million years. But don't forget that there still may be a 7-kilometer comet hurtling through the vastness of space, and the probability that it'll hit Earth has long been more than 7%. What will happen to us if an asteroid 12 kilometers in diameter hits the Earth? The Earth's atmosphere can't slow down space objects larger than 600 meters in diameter. That's why such an object will crash into our planet at full speed, leave a crater about 170 kilometers wide, and shatter into hundreds of rocky fragments. If you're at the epicenter of an impact at that moment, even the deepest bunker won't save you. You'll be blinded by a flash of light and simply evaporate. All buildings for many hundreds of kilometers around will be blown away by the blast wave, leading to a massive tsunami around the planet that will destroy the remaining buildings. But that's still not the worst. Doug Robertson, a geologist from the University of Colorado, believes that the main danger is not the asteroid itself, but its debris. During the explosion, chunks of rock and remnants of the meteorite can fly up to 70 kilometers high, and 40 minutes after the collision, they'll head back to Earth. Thousands of small meteorites will be set on fire in the atmosphere and quickly heat our planet. This will cause massive fires and destroy all life around. So, it was at this point that 66 million years ago, most of the dinosaurs went extinct. And if this happens in our time, millions of people will die from the meteorite fall and fires. But what is the probability of such an asteroid hitting Earth? NASA experts believe that the risk of a giant asteroid impact is very high. That's why, back in 1992, the U.S. Congress set a goal for NASA. Over the next 25 years, they had to detect 90% of near-Earth objects that are larger than one kilometer. Such an asteroid could cause severe damage within a radius of several thousand kilometers. To make matters worse, it could disrupt communication and even satellite navigation. 
today, space is monitored by dozens of different programs. Together, they have already found about 50% of near-Earth objects with diameters from 140 meters. And soon this figure will rise, as NASA is planning to launch the NEO Surveyor Infrared Telescope. It'll register all objects larger than 140 meters within a radius of 50 million kilometers from Earth's orbit. The NEO Surveyor will be equipped with two heat-sensitive infrared channels. This means that it'll be able not only to detect an asteroid, but also to measure its exact size, find out its composition, and calculate its speed and trajectory. If the dinosaurs had had such technology, they would have known about the catastrophe in advance. And well, what can we actually do with an asteroid flying towards the Earth? How can we protect ourselves from an asteroid impact? In fact, scientists know what to do. The first thing is to destroy the asteroid before it enters our atmosphere. For example, blow it up with a nuclear device. But think twice before launching nuclear warheads into space. This strategy has a huge disadvantage, as debris of the asteroid can still fall on the Earth and lead to destruction. But there's still another way. An asteroid can be knocked off its course so that it passes by our planet. And NASA's already launched the first DART training mission. This spacecraft will crash into the small asteroid Dimorphos this September. Scientists will try to turn it away from its original trajectory. If they succeed, it'll become an effective way to protect Earth from asteroids. Or not. Probably not. The problem is that the diameter of Dimorphos is only 170 meters, and the DART spacecraft that has to crash into it weighs 610 kilograms. To shoot down the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs, we'd need an aircraft 70 times larger than that. It turns out that today we don't have adequate protection from outer space threats, but that doesn't mean we can't survive. Astronomers will be able to notice an asteroid capable of destroying everything long before the impact, and we'll have some time to prepare. People will have to build bunkers about 5 kilometers underground in order to survive. Obviously, there won't be enough space in such bunkers for everyone. However, it's equally clear that the chance of getting there will probably increase if you have a gun in your hands. But also, you won't be able to just sit in the bunker for a couple of days and then return to your everyday life afterwards. After the fires, ash and dust particles will float in the atmosphere for another 10 years, completely blocking the sunlight. Thus, the temperature on the planet will instantly drop by about 28 degrees, and all plants will die. They'll be followed by herbivorous animals and finally predators. Only those who prepared in advance will be able to survive. For example, the feathered dinosaurs began to evolve into birds long before the asteroid impact, and that's what saved their lives. Such animals were much smaller than their fellow dinosaurs, which means they didn't need as much food to survive. Shortly before the asteroid impact, some of them developed a beak and became omnivorous. They fed on insects, plant seeds, nuts, and whatever else they could find. People also need to be prepared that the food in the bunker may end too soon. The main problem is that we won't be able to grow plants and farm animals without sunlight. The only thing that can grow in catacombs is mushrooms. So, if you want to survive, you'll have two options. The first is to follow the example of the feathered dinosaurs and become fully omnivorous. Most likely, the source of protein for humans will not be meat and beans, but cockroaches. According to scientists, they're among the few who will survive the asteroid impact not a big insect lover, there's still another option. You're locked in a bunker with hundreds of other people. Today, they're your neighbors, but tomorrow, they might be your potential dinner. In general, if you have a gun and no moral principles, you'll be just all right. So, will we suffer mass extinction? Elon Musk, for example, thinks we will. One day, a giant asteroid will hit Earth again, and so far, we have no protection from it. And what is your plan in the event of the apocalypse? Let us know in the comments.